What is going on, everybody? It's the Frog from here for a SmackDown review for August, October the 14th, 2022. On the road to Crown Jewel slash War Games, but I guess you're going to have to say Crown Jewel because they have not got anything built towards War Games for Survivor Series just yet. We had a fatal four way for the number one contendership to the Intercontinental Championship. A talent moves from Raw to SmackDown in a very interesting way. We had. Drew McIntyre destroy Karrion Cross as the show was coming on the air. And more dissension in the bloodline, more stuff going on with the bloodline, and everything else in between. And Roxanne Perez makes her a SmackDown debut, teaming up because this coming next Tuesday, it's going to be Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade having two singles matches, but the other person gets to pick their poison on in the opponent of that, of the other before their match at Halloween Havoc next week. So, we start off with Sami Zayn and Sosa Cola and Jamie Uso. Um, hold on. This is wrong. Oh, yeah, that's right. We started off with the beatdown. We started off, actually, with the, um, we go to the back, we come out, well, seeing outside, and we see a car, a truck hit a car. And it looked like Karrion Cross was driving the car that was hit. He's hunched over, like, in pain. When Drew McIntyre comes from behind, beats the living the shit out of him, Sammy is heading to the pickup truck as a fisher try to pull him off. He goes to, op- he opens the door going to smash Karrion Cross's face in. But they were able to pull him back. He's like, this is just the beginning. I'm thinking, yeah, this is a shitty ass way to book your baby face. This, like, over baby face, this big guy. He takes the coward's way of getting revenge on somebody who beat him by a little bit of fuckery on Saturday. Like, mm, not a big fan of that. So he gets taken out of the Fatal 4-Way, because Karrion Cross was supposed to be in the Fatal 4-Way. Drew was not added in. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Cole and Wade Barrett then greet the audience as we knew they make their way to the ring. Cooks and Lions fans that they are the longest running tag team champions in history at 483 days, which the new Usos are definitely beating that. But what says that record is important to them because that is their legacy, says the record will stand forever. No. We head backstage to Sami Zayn, Sosa Cohen, and Jay Uso. J- Sami asked Jimmy, is Jay, last words, Jimmy and Jay said he's dealing with a family thing. Zayn tells Sokoa to stay backstage and Jay to come with him. Zayn's phone rings and he picks it up and Roman Reigns and says he wants to talk to Jay. Reigns then reprimands Jay in front of them over the phone. Poor Zayn soaks jokes with him and he heads to the ring along with Jay. So we had Kofi Kingston versus Xavier versus Sami Zayn. Opening match of the night. Of course, this match is happening because of if I'm, what happened last week. With the bloodline and everything. And of course, as you know, on Monday, Sami Zayn was supposed to, like, Jay was supposed to help Sami pick up the win. And Sami Zayn told him not to. And in the end, Sami Zayn did not take the blame for all this. It was actually, um, it was actually Jay Uso who got blamed for what happened with the comp with it. So they have a match, they have their match here. Really fun opening match here, too. It's Sami Zayn. It's Kofi Kingston. Now, obviously, the Jay was told, you better make sure Sami picks up the win tonight. So, they're going back and forth. Blue Thunder Bomb after Sami Zayn, after Jay Uso kicks. Xavier Woods head off, distracting Kofi Kingston. Hits the Blue Thunder Bomb. I'm like, come on, Sami, please lose, lose to the Blue Thunder Bomb. That, that, that move is way too fucking good to not have somebody lose to it. Sami Zayn has only won one, uh, ever won one match with the Blue Thunder Bomb, and that was against AJ Styles a couple years ago when he hit the Haluva kick into the Blue Thunder Bomb. Other than that, he has never won on SmackDown or WWE television with the Blue Thunder Bomb, and I think it's a much better finish than the Haluva kick. So Kofi eventually reverse, um, reverses a roll up, but Jay, the referee, doesn't see it. Jay kicks Kofi back into a reverse pin. One, two, three. Sami Zayn picks up the win. So, Sami Zayn got the job done. Jey Uso got, made sure to get the main event, to get Jim, to get his, the, the honest Jey Uso the win he should have got on Monday. We had backstage to Triple H, who's talking to some of the officers about the crash, which they never really followed up on the crash. We went through this entire two-hour show tonight, 
And tell it this right here, we really didn't see, they didn't say who caused the car crash, who's responsible, why it happened, anything. No, we didn't get anything else the rest of the night unless I missed something. Minister President says he's reached his breaking point. He says he won't fight his son. He says he can't do this anymore. And he says he's came to tell him face to face. And he's re he's finally really hard to say this, but he tells Triple H, I quit. Triple H is like, oh, we're not losing you. No, 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 no. He's like, no, 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 wait. Let's talk about this. Let's go to my office. Let's, like, five minutes. Let's get something else. Let's find a better resolution for this. And we'll see him later. We'll talk. Like, they go to talk. So that is the premise of that. Back from bread, Roxanne Perez is talking with Shotzi and Raquel walks in and wishes her luck against Cora J. Perez says she chooses Rodriguez um, as poison for Cora J. Damage Control walks in and says she's the only, Bailey says she's the only choice. Bailey Perez says she was, but she's on a losing streak. Bailey kind of becomes angry and says she will kick all three of their asses tonight. And that is later on in the show. Braun Strowman versus James Madrid and Maverick and Brian Thomas. Yes, Braun Strowman, who just got done in wrestling, wrestling in a six-man tag team match, what was it, last week? And wrestled Otis, what, two weeks ago, has been reduced to wrestling squash matches against two jobbers. Isn't this beneath, beneath him? Like, seriously, if it's not beneath Mr. Braun Strowman, why are we having him go out there and having squat two on one handicap squash matches against the likes of these two guys. Like seriously, what the fuck am I watching? So he beats them down. The thing about this is, of course, that during this match, Omar shows up in in the crowd, the aisleway area in the crowd. After the match, MVP gives him some credit for what he's for what he's do, but he has to be ever seen Omar. He says he looks normal standing next to him. No. Tells him not to get too comfortable. Strowman says he'll show him he's nothing compared to him. So that match is obviously going to be happening in Saudi Arabia. Get the match done and over with and then send Omos packing. Backstage, Sammy tells Sokoa to get the win like he did. Jay is like, well, you're welcome, Sammy. You're welcome. You're welcome because I hoped you win tonight. Zane's like, how? I got the win on my own before Jay actually saw and he said no. Segura says that he will, you know what, after he's done lowering us tonight, he'll get a piece of his own, he'll get his own piece of gold, at, like, very soon. The big, like, the big problem I have with, say, with, with Jay interjecting and saying, hey, well, you're welcome, Sandy, is that you're supposed to do that stuff and not mention shit. You're supposed to just sit there like a good little boy and take your lumps and, like, not ask for any credit or anything. But for some reason, Jay decided he had to open his mouth. After that, we had the much-anticipated debut in ring of L.A. Knight. I sit here and I watch this happen, and I'm like, how Triple A, how, not Triple H, I'm sorry, how Vince McMahon had this guy so, like, had this guy set up to be nothing but a manager is beyond me. How are you going to have a guy... Like, L.A. fucking night on your television and just have him be the leader of the Maximum Male Models with Massey and Mansoir. Like, seriously. How are you going to have this guy who can talk, he has the gift of gab, is pretty good in the ring as well, going to go out there and just... Be the manager for two guys who can't even strap his, can't even tie his laces on his boots. Give me a break. Beats him up, beats this guy down, no problem, wins easily with the BFT. Bull, um, what the fuck they call it? I didn't call it the BFT, but the BFT. After the match, he says, "You don't think I did that for you, did you?" No, 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 no. I don't need some humped up incels cheering, um, cheering my name. That I did it for myself, and he says, I'm putting everyone on notice, the locker room on notice, that whose game is this? It's L.A. Knight's game. Yeah! It's great to see here L.A. Knight being L.A. Knight. This guy has been held down as the man known as Max Dupree way too long. Him being Max Dupree for a week was too long of him being Max Dupree. Um... Control versus Roxanne Perez, Raquel Rodriguez, and Shotzi Blackheart. This match was basically 
Roxanne Perez showing up on the main roster, showing you what she can do and how good she is. This woman is 20 years old. I'm, she's 12 years younger than me, and this woman looks like she has been wrestling for two decades. She is so good. She is. There's a reason they call her a wrestling prodigy. Like, she just got, she's got, like, the transition between move and move is so seamless. This woman's got it. She's got it all. Just get the crowd behind her, and this, and this woman will be a big star for this company for the next 20 years. Just saying. In the end, there was a little botchiness towards the end. As Perez tries to go for some kind of roll-up, but because, of, I think because of her size or whatever, it didn't work out. So, Bailey had to improvise, roll her up herself. And one, two, three picked up the win. All I gotta say is that it really didn't matter that Raquel or um, Shotzi win this match. This match was Raquel, was Roxanne Perez coming into on, on the SmackDown and showing you that this is the future of the women's division. They need to strap the rocket to this woman ASAP whenever they get a chance to. We had the last week's video of the God of Nell Fantasma's main roster debut. Hit shit well, heads to the ring. Back from break, video hyping up the Viking Raiders and Sarah Logan. It's definitely Sarah Logan, which should just be Sarah Rowe. Sarah Logan just, eh, doesn't do it for me. Logan of Nell Fantasma makes short work of shit row. Shit row starts working for a bit, but it doesn't take long for Ashanti the Adonis to be taken out by, um, Shit, bye. bye. Uh, Santa Escobar it takes it takes like knocks on um, Adonis off of the top off the off the apron while the ref's not looking. Rolls under the ring. B Fab goes over to try and say, "Hey, hey, hey! Somebody's not like that." When Zelina Vega comes over, takes her out and beats her down, leaving shit um zero dollar by himself. Allowing the Legado del Fantasma to beat them in quick succession. And hopefully this is it for Legado del Fantasma to deal with shit row. They can move on to other, more important things like challenging for the tag team titles. Maybe if they ever introduce trios titles, winning the trios championships. Because let's fake it, face it. You got uh, Legado del Fantasma. You got the possible... Um, you have the New Day if um, Big E comes back. You have Judgment Day. You have um, the Bloodline. That's four teams right there. Um, there's other teams too. They, the Brawling Boots, Imperium. That's six teams right there. Six teams. There's other ones falling on the top of my head I can't think of, but six teams right there. That's a nice, decent division for the Trios division. So it would not surprise me if Triple H comes out with Trios titles. They're just adding Trios. We have backstage at Sonya Bell and Kayla Braxton. Sonya the Bell takes shots at Liv Morgan, saying she has given, been given many opportunities, but she fails all of them. She said she got the short of Extreme Rules and says Morgan doesn't have it. Morgan comes out of nowhere and attacks her, sending her into a road case, clears off a table, sends her into it. She sets her up at the table, climbs a piece of scaffolding, and hits a senton as she laughs maniacally while they're down. So apparently they are doing some kind of dark, demented character change for Liv Morgan. She is going to be on the Chucky TV show in two weeks, on well, twelve days, not three, well, almost two weeks, about twelve days. It's twenty six. So there's that. Back from inside, Ricochet heads to the ring. Go to commercial break. Come back. Solo Sokoa and Sheamus also come out, and then Samantha Irvine says that Karrion Cross is no longer able to compete as the being his injuries from earlier in the night. So the fourth competitor is Rey Mysterio, and I'm not the only one who probably thought this. Like the moment she said. The fourth competitor is going to be, I'm like, they're really going to put Drew McIntyre here after what he did. They're going to reward Drew McIntyre, but no. It's Rey Mysterio. But what does this mean for Rey Mysterio? What does this mean for everything? Well, Rey Mysterio, during this match, Michael Cole does say that he was informed during the commercial break when they come back from the first commercial break that Rey Mysterio has been moved officially to the SmackDown roster. He made a deal with Triple H to get away from his son and the Judgment Day, which, in my opinion, is very, very good for Dominic, the Judgment Day, and Rey Mysterio. It gets Rey away from his son. We do not need to see Rey Mysterio versus, versus Dominic one-on-one -on -one until WrestleMania. That's where that match needs to happen. They can set that up at the Royal Rumble. 
So get Dominic Mysterio on, keep him on Raw, with, and he gets Dominic away from his father, allows him to stand on his own, away from his father, and see what he can do without his father being there to be by his side or go up against him. Let this guy spread his wings and see if he can fly on his own. And he's been doing a lot better as a heel than he has ever been as a babyface. But now it's going to see what happens with Dominic. And again, it keeps these two away from each other because honestly, if you didn't pull this trigger and you didn't have Dominic Rey Mysterio go to SmackDown, you would have to get this match between these two out of the way soon. This is a way to delay, to delay this match until we get to WrestleMania season. So it could be at the Royal Rumble. They could set it up at the Elimination Chamber, whatever the pay-per-view they're going to have in February. All I know is this match needs to happen at WrestleMania. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And this is a great way to stay away from that match for now. So we have Solo Sokoa, Rey Mysterio, Sheamus, and Ricochet in a fatal four-way. Here's a stat that apparently is true, is that Rey Mysterio and Sheamus have never had a one-on-one -on -one match against each other in at least all this time in WWE. I do not believe that, but apparently it's true. Now... We did have a tease in here as well because Solo Sokoa and Seamus midway through the match or on the outside or whatever. We had Rey Mysterio and Ricochet one on one. I know they played a couple times in Lucha Underground when he was Prince Puma and Rey Mysterio was Rey Mysterio. But I saw my only one, one and only one on one match outside of WWE that I saw between these two was at What Culture Pro Wrestling. It was while they were doing the. Um, World Cup tournament, which I think was some fucking great shit because you saw matches and talent from all over the world, all in one big huge tournament. Well, in between that, they had a pay-per-view. I cannot remember the pay-per-view name on, by, on, off the top of my head, but they had one of those special pay-per-view events, and they had Ricochet versus Rey Mysterio, and that was by far a banger of a match. So, I would really like to see Ricochet, Rey Mysterio, one-on-one -on -one in an actual singles match in WWE. Now, I was thinking, Sheamus is in this match. There's got to be a way to get the, how to keep him from winning the champion, how to winning the number one contendership and getting a third match against Volta right now. That match between him and Volta will be a long ways off. That's something that I've seen some people say should happen in WrestleMania where Sheamus should win his first Intercontinental Championship, and I totally agree. So what happened is Sheamus is getting on a roll, and then Jimmy comes, Jay comes out. Sammy comes out. They're both trying to help their brother, their, their buddy, um, their bloodline mate, win this match. So on the outside, Sheamus, Sammy and Jay beat up on Sheamus. Here come the brawling boots. So Sakura comes out and fights the brawling boots. So the boots and the bloodline all battle to the back and leads it down to Ricochet and Rey Mysterio. So. Rey Mysterio catches Ricochet with, I have no fucking idea. It looked like a reverse. It looked like someone of a hurricane on it, but instead of him falling all the way through, it's like he planted him on the head. Rey catches him into a 619, 1, 2, 3, with the frog smash, as they saw, called it the Viva La Raza, paying that tribute to Eddie as usual. 1, 2, 3, and Rey Mysterio picks up the win. It is your new number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. He... He didn't get on the mic, but they got the camera down far enough that we could actually hear him over the music. And he's like, this is his home now. And now he is the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. And he's super excited to get the work done and wow, whatever. Again, congratulations to Baby Stadio being on SmackDown now. The Blue Brand, where for a majority of his career, early, his early WWE career, Baby Stadio was a man on the Blue Brand. So... Good to see Rey Mysterio back on his way where he belongs, and that is on SmackDown. Again, it's great to see that they finally found, they found a way to split him and Dom for now. But when we get to WrestleMania season, they're going to come back around to it. It's a way to keep it out of sight and out of mind. And when it comes back to it, it's like, wow, we didn't get that match. We need to have it now. And it happens at WrestleMania. And then we had about seven minutes left in the show, and nine minutes left in the show, Bray Wyatt came out, gave us a bunch of fucking, like, oh, this is a real me, and I, 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 let's first off, the theme sucks, the presentation sucks, I did not hear and hear Wyndham talk about 
problems that he has or everything, only to get cut off by his mass self on a video screen. As we saw tonight with the whole Wyatt thing, absolutely fucking sucked. I'm not talking about it until I see something that's actually interesting. This is the only time I'm talking about it. So far, the return of Bray Wyatt to me is a fucking fail. Plain and simple. But that is your SmackDown review. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Find me on my Defrance Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash Defrance Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I'll see you guys on Monday for Raw. Until then, my name is the France. And I'll see you guys later.